Constitution. States don't have to do that if they, it's a strong public policy in their own state. So for example, if some state were to, well, California does not allow um, a first cousins to marry, some states do. There are variations in the law. And, and so uh, other states allow uh, common law marriages. California does not allow common law marriages. So there are, there are, there's, a, there's, a, there's a variety of, of, of laws uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in our republic dealing with, the, with marriage. And this is a specific, it wasn't the only purpose, but one of, its, one of the purposes of, of Proposition 22 was to stop the application of the full faith and credit provision of the United States Constitution. From 1999 to 2006, the legislature enacted a series of laws which established domestic partnerships and which are known now as the Domestic Partner Act. Uh, the California Supreme Court in the in re marriage cases, that's the case that established the ability under California law of same-sex couples to marry, recognized that, quote, California statutory provisions generally afford same-sex couples the opportunity to enter into a domestic partnership and thereby obtain virtually all the benefits and responsibilities afforded by California law to married opposite-sex couples. Indeed, in a 2005 decision, the court said, and this is important, the decision to enter into a domestic partnership is more than a change in the legal status of individuals. The consequences of the decision is the creation of a new family unit with all of its implications in terms of personal commitment as well as legal rights and obligations. In 2008, in the in-ray marriage cases, the California Supreme Court considered the question of whether the California statutory provisions reserving the word marriage to heterosexual couples violated the California Constitution. The issue was not whether same-sex couples who were domestic partners and married heterosexual couples enjoyed the same substantive rights under California law. That wasn't the issue before them. The issue, as the majority saw it, was whether it was a violation of the California Constitution for the state to use the word marriage for heterosexual couples and to refuse the, word, the use of the word for same-sex couples. Without deciding the matter, the court raised the possibility that by dropping the word marriage and calling both relationships the same thing, banana, aardvark, whatever, the, the state constitution would be satisfied. Before further discussing the court's decision, we need to take a little detour. So this is a, a little enhanced civics class. This is a brief summary of, excuse the camera, I'm sorry, but I'm fighting a cold. Uh, a, a brief summary of how courts approach the question of constitutionality of statutes. Because uh, without this, it's kind of, you're just, you're, you're, the Gary Larson thing with the fleas on the back of the dog, you are here, you know. You need that, otherwise you won't know where you are in the back of the dog. Um, statutes are normally entitled to deference by, the cor uh, by, by, by courts. Uh, it should not matter if a court thinks the statutes are good or bad public policy. Uh, that's the realm of the democratic process. The most basic standard for constitutional review is whether a statute is rationally related to some legitimate government interest. This is a very low hurdle, which is almost always cleared by the challenge statute. For example, California has numerous laws regulating insurance. If challenged in court, the state would, not have, uh, uh, would only have to show that, uh, that uh, regulating insurance is a legitimate state interest and that the regulations are aimed at fulfilling the interest. The state would not have to show that the regulations are the best possible or absolutely necessary Fulfilling, for fulfilling the state's interest. However, when a statute either impinges on a fundamental right or draws a distinction based on what is known as a suspect classification, 
the court will normally apply a much higher standard, and that standard is called strict scrutiny to the review of the statute. Under strict scrutiny, the state must prove that the statute is intended to fulfill a compelling state interest and that the particular statute is necessary to meet that end. So for example, a state law that outlaws all private <coughs> schools violates the, co the constitutional right to privacy of parents to provide for their children's education. The state would have to prove that it has a compelling state interest in not allowing children to go to private schools without regard to the quality of the education provided by such schools. Note that this statute, and this is a real case actually, <coughs> applied equally to all uh, people in the state. In this example, there was no question regarding the constitutional guarantee of equal protection under the law. The case is Pierce versus Society, Society of Sisters. It's a late 1920s case. Oregon actually outlawed private schools. And some nuns said, that's, that's our business. And went all the way to the Supreme Court. And it was not decided on religious grounds, religious freedom grounds. It was decided on privacy grounds. and. I don't think the good sisters thought this would ever happen, but it was one of the cases cited to support Roe versus Wade. And if a statute does create classifications whereby one group of persons is, for example, denied a benefit and another group is allowed a benefit, then the statute will be subject uh, uh, to analysis under the equal protection provisions of the Constitution. If the classification is based on a suspect classification and or the activity involved is considered a fundamental right, then strict scrutiny will be applied. So if the law allows whites to vote and prevents African Americans from doing so, it will be subject to strict scrutiny because A, race is a suspect classification, and also because the right to vote is a fundamental right. A fundamental right is either one that is expressly mentioned in the Constitution, or it is a right described as one that is objectively, deeply rooted in our society's history and traditions, and which is implicit in the concept of ordered liberty. The concept of suspect classification arises from the notion that there are certain groups in our, our society, the classic example of this are, are African Americans, that need extra protection by the, uh, by the judiciary because they have a history of insularity, persecution, and discrimination, and are politically powerless to protect their interest in the democratic process. Now what's important to understand is this, is that virtually no legislation survives a court, uh, when a court subjects it to strict scrutiny. Uh, hen's teeth, Korematsu. Korematsu cases where <laughs> our Japanese American fellow citizens in California were trucked off to, to, uh, to camps during the beginning of the, of the Second World War. That was to my knowledge, the only case uh, where a gov government uh, survived, a government, uh, the, gov the enactment survived uh, strict scrutiny. So in order to decide the issue of whether the term marriage could be reserved to heterosexual couples, the court first determined what it called the, quote, nature and scope of the right to marry, unquote. The court began a constitutional analysis of California law reserving marriage to heterosexual couples by determining whether marriage was a fundamental right under the California Constitution. And now I'm going to read from the, court, uh, from the court to let the court have its own voice. This is how the court summarized its conclusion. We conclude that under the state's constitution, the, constitutionality, uh, the constitutionally based right to marry properly must be understood to encompass the core set of basic substantive legal rights and attributes traditionally associated with marriage that are so integral to an individual's liberty and personal autonomy that they may not be eliminated or abrogated by the legislature or by the electorate through the statutory initiative process. Those core substantive rights include, most fundamentally, the opportunity of an individual to establish with the person with whom the individual has chosen to share his or her life an officially recognized and protected family. And those words, officially recognized and protected family, are in italics. Uh, possessing mutual rights and responsibilities and entitled to the same respect and dignity accorded to union.